Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. Kalen Clark goes pro in the WNBA, just got a whole lot more talented. Also, the Lakers are in a familiar spot, but will LeBron and company see a similar outcome? And would you rather face the Nuggets or the Thunder if you're a Western Conference play-in team? Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. I'm Peter Bukowski, starting your day with the can't miss stories and biggest debates in sports. You're locked on sports today. Searching all major sports. Found. Let's start with the biggest story. On Monday night, Caitlin Clark was back in front of the cameras, this time not on the court. She was walking the orange carpet ahead of being the number one overall pick in the 2024 WNBA draft. But plenty more to talk about in this one because we all expected Caitlin Clark to go number one overall. M. Adler from uh, the next and Locked On Women's Basketball joins me now um, from just outside the theater. Um, had to duck out because you know, it's loud in there, right? So, um, uh, give me the biggest non Caitlin storyline of the night. I think the biggest non Caitlin storyline of the night, at least in terms of surprise and applause, was Vegas selecting Kate Martin, given that mm. she was in person here and was able to come up to the podium to accept uh, being drafted and celebrate. Uh, but she wasn't actually, you know, formally invited. She was not one of the players. Like, you know, the W went out of its way to invite to the green room. Uh, but courtesy of being, you know, best friends with Caitlin Clark, being at her draft table, to everyone's surprise, you know, Vegas picked her in the middle of the second round, and the the theater just erupted. It was such a wonderful moment. So even even not Caitlin Clark's second biggest story is a Caitlin Clark adjacent story, of course, uh, her, her teammate. Uh, there was also um, a couple teams at the top got a chance to double dip Chicago and LA. What did you think of, of how the draft fell for them? The draft had some intrigue coming in. Was LA going to go with some of the rumors that we heard? And were they going to, you know, do a little game theory, try to take Camilla at number two so that they could get, you know, Cameron break at number four. Was Chicago going to do something, you know, particularly interesting with the, with number three and number seven beyond, you know, what they ended up with. Um, but we ended up with, you know, pretty much chalk, at least, you know, yeah. in terms of best player available going to the teams you'd expect, you know, Dallas really needed a guard uh, who can do a lot of stuff and is ready made. Enter JC Sheldon. The Mystics really like defense. They really like players who can, you know, really project to WNBA roles without, you know, needing to needing to hit pie in the sky. And they're okay with being a little quieter in terms of everything that goes on with the team. Aaliyah Edwards. So you see all of these things playing out, and it's just really exciting what some of these teams are going to look like. Like I said, Washington, Aaliyah Edwards is one of my favorite players in the draft, particularly high on her. So, you know, Brittany Sykes, Aaliyah Edwards, Shakira Austin, such a fun matchup or such a fun grouping this coming season. LA, they have so much talent to work with. Chicago, they are going to grab so many rebounds. So and much it's, just a lot of, it's a lot of fun personality there too with not only Camilla and Angel, but also Brianna Turner in that front court. Sure. There's a lot, I think, to look forward to this coming season. And given some of the quality internationals, also, you know, some rosters that maybe you had a favorite player who was at the end of Minnesota or at the end of um, Connecticut's roster. They're a lot more likely to pick the roster now than you might have believed a day ago. We can't not talk about Caitlin Clark, but I, you know, I wanted to give some other players their, their shine here too. Uh, she said uh, in an interview that she she feels like the thing that is going to be, um, you know, the the quickest transition here, the most beneficial to her early on, is going to be her passing, and that I think caused some people to go, wait, come on, she just set the scoring record in the NCAA, <laughs> like this is this is ridiculous, but. Um, we've seen people like Kelsey Plum, whose record she broke, come to the W and struggle to score. Also, let's not forget, she was playing basketball like five minutes ago and is going to have to play basketball again in like five more minutes. So like that, that is part of the deal here too. But do you buy this? The passing is going to translate sooner than the scoring. This is what a lot of people have said, you know, including our own Howard Megdal. That's that's one of his favorite lines. And it's it is funny, but it's also a little bit true. And I say a little bit true in that you know, when 
you're coming into the W as such a heavily dominant scorer, it is in the context of Indiana specifically, a lot easier to fit in as a passer. They don't have a particularly good or standout point guard at the moment, just in terms of the pure um, comfort and fit. I like Grace Berger, but she's not Caitlin Clark. But what they do have is Kelsey Mitchell is one of the absolute best off-ball scoring guards in the league. Melissa Smith is a bucket. Everyone knows Aaliyah Boston at this point. Yep. And between all of those players, you know, Caitlin Clark has a lot of options to go with. I don't think that either of us believe that her scoring, her shooting isn't going to be electric from day one, but it's a lot easier to pass people open. I shouldn't say it's a lot easier, but given her teammates, yes. I think it's a lot more and her likely talent, that she's right? going to, exactly. It's a lot more likely that she's going to command attention to pass those things open than she is to, you know, easily drive and draw foul and finish. But do I think that she'll be right there within, you know, a year? Absolutely. I'd be shocked if it took even till the All-Star break. Stay up to date all year on the WNBA and its stars by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and Locked On Women's Basketball on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Coming up, LeBron, the Lakers seem further away from a title than last year, despite being in the same starting position for the postseason. Before we get to that, LeBron will be joining a star-studded Olympic roster. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. The Lakers and Pelicans are almost too close to call. FanDuel has the line at one with the road Lakers the favorite. The winner gets the pleasure of facing the defending champion Nuggets. Awesome for them. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all the shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The Brooklyn Nets are going to try a California rebuild. Sacramento Kings assistant Jordy Fernandez has emerged as the Brooklyn Nets' choice to become the franchise's next coach, separating himself amid a wide month-long search, according to reports. The 41-year-old Fernandez has been a fast-rising coaching candidate over the past two years. Fernandez will take over a Nets franchise that completed a 32-50 and season under interim coach Kevin Ollie, its fifth coach since 2020. Team USA is putting together one of the best Olympic basketball rosters we have ever seen, or at least one of the most star-studded. They're finalizing their 24 Paris roster, including some of the most iconic players of the last 20 years in the NBA. LeBron James, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, and Joel Embiid. According to reports, U.S. basketball is planning to formally announce the 11-man roster that also includes Anthony Davis, Devin Booker, Anthony Edwards, Jason Tatum, Drew Holiday, Bam Adebayo, and Tyrese Halliburton. Dream team? Well, stay tuned. Legendary New York Yankees play-by-play announcer John Sterling has retired. This is Stacey Gossulius of Locked On Yankees, and the big news, John Sterling retiring. We knew the day was coming sooner rather than later because Mr. Sterling is turning 86 on July 4th, but it was the abruptness of the announcement that has us all floored and we don't know what to do. That seemed to be the general consensus around social media. No one knew how to really react to it. Everyone's sad. We don't get to hear him anymore. After calling 5,420 regular season games for the Yankees and 211 postseason games, 35 years of radio for John Sterling, this is a sad day for all Yankee fans. We're going to talk about it on Locked on Yankees, and I can't promise you that I won't cry. I probably will. With LeBron James and Anthony Davis on the Lakers, whatever their record is, it was 47 and 35 in the regular season. 
No one at the top of the Western Conference wants to see those two guys in a playoff series. But in order to get in, the Lakers are going to have to win at least one of the next two games. It starts tonight with the New Orleans Pelicans, who they just beat the brakes off of, by the way. Andy, Andy Kamenetsky from Locked on Lakers joins me now. And, and Andy, uh, there, there's going to be a lot of time to talk about what comes next if this does not go the right way for the Lakers. But that puts a lot of pressure on these next two games if they need them to get to that place, uh, what is on the line here for the Lakers? I mean, wh what isn't on the line? Uh, <laughs> you know, the the possibility that the LeBron James, Anthony Davis championship era, that that window will feel definitively shut. Mm -hmm. Darvin Ham's job security, maybe even Rob Polinka, who runs basketball operations, his job security. Um, LeBron and Anthony Davis will feel absolutely planted with this organization for as long as they want to. But I think anybody else would be on the table in terms of possibly being moved to make offseason changes. Um, if they miss the playoffs altogether, other than moving LeBron or moving AD outside of it being their express wishes, there is nothing that is beyond the realm of possibility or imagination. So let's get into this game. We just saw it, uh, and the Lakers acquitted themselves quite nicely yes, over the did. weekend. Um, and and they are not going to be afraid of anyone they face in the postseason. They're not going to be afraid of the Thunder. They're not going to be afraid of the Nuggets. Um, but this Pelicans team, uh, they're they're a tough matchup for a lot of teams by point differential. These are two teams that are theoretically um, not that close in terms of quality. Yet here they are in a win and in situation. So what what is the key matchup in this one? Um, I think it's going to be LeBron defending Zion Williamson and his ability to handle Zion in single coverage as much as possible. LeBron did a number on Zion on both ends. It both looks sides like he of the took ball. it personally, yeah. I don't even know if it's so much taking it personally as it is this, is this is what we need to happen. We need to win this game. In order to win this game, we need to completely shut down their best player, which is Zion. And... It's a difficult matchup for Zion in that LeBron is, especially at this time of the season when he is fully engaged defensively, he is one of the few players in the league with both the speed and the strength to handle Zion by himself. He's also got the basketball IQ to anticipate a lot of what Zion's looking to do. And then there's the whole element of let's just say he gets past LeBron Zion still has to deal with Anthony Davis as the back line. Yeah. The Lakers are three and one in the season series against the Pelicans by an average victory of almost 26 points a game. <laughs> and I don't, honestly, I don't think it's a fluke, which I want to make it clear guarantees nothing for this seven, eight matchup. Right. But I do think the Lakers happen to be a bad matchup for the Pelicans. Like the Pelicans are not a small team, but the size that they have, I don't think matches up particularly well with the Lakers size and they, they have a real difficulty figuring out who to start at center because if it's Jonas Valanciunas, he's not agile enough, quick enough to deal in enough of a scoring presence to have out there against Anthony Davis. If you go with Larry Nance Jr., he's more mobile, can maybe move AD a little bit further from the basket, but he's going to get overwhelmed. He, he's just far too small to deal with AD. Um, Rui Hachimura, I think, becomes a walking mismatch between all the sides that they have to try to devote with LeBron and AD. Um, D'Angelo Russell has torched the Pelicans all season long. Um, a lot of their best wing defenders in New Orleans are guys that are going to be too small to put on LeBron or even Rui. But do you want to dedicate all of it towards the backcourt with D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves? I think I think the Pelicans are a good team. I just think the Lakers are a bad matchup for them. Is there a matchup that you think would be better for the Lakers should they get in? Because they're either going to be in the seven line or the eight line. Oh, they match up far better against the Thunder. They've they've had a lot of success against the Thunder this season for reasons that I think are real. Like just OKC does not have an answer for Anthony Davis. Yeah. Um, Chet Holmgren, who I think is a terrific young player. He just isn't quite big enough yet to deal, strong enough yet to deal with AD. Um, Rui and LeBron are going to be a difficult matchup for them. They've done a reasonably good job containing Shea Gilgis Alexander, making him work. That being said, there are a lot of people out there galaxy braining the idea that the Lakers should 
intentionally lose this game trying to get, avoid Denver in a 2-7 matchup and try to get OKC as the 1-8. That is – it's not even too clever by half because it's just dumb because you're <laughs> – you're setting yourself up for a single elimination matchup with either Steph Curry, who is on the short list of most dangerous players you could face in a single elimination game, yep. or against the Kings, who have been, frankly, kicking the Lakers' asses for the last couple of years. And DeMontis Sabonis has been owning the matchup against Anthony Davis. And if the Lakers can't at least be neutral – in the AD matchup, whoever they're playing, they're going to have a difficult time winning that game. They have not beaten the Kings in a long time. Like, don't overthink this. Win the game and take your chances with Denver. Stay up to date all year on the LA Lakers by subscribing to Locked On Sports Today and Locked On Lakers on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Coming up, would you rather face the Nuggets or the Thunder? Guys, I need you to listen up for this huge announcement. I've been tracking the leaderboards every day, keeping my eye on the scores, putting all my heart into it. And I'm super pumped to announce I'm finally on top. That's right. Obviously, I'm talking about the hit mobile game Monopoly Go. You've probably heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great mobile twist on the classic Monopoly. You can play anywhere, anytime. You explore hundreds of Monopoly boards from Las Vegas to Camelot to the moon, all while raking in a huge fortune. Charge rent on iconic properties, just like Classic Monopoly. You can charge your friend's rent on your iconic properties or go after their Monopoly money by pulling bank heists and taking wrecking balls to their landmarks. But my favorite part is the leaderboards, where you can see who's a Monopoly tycoon and who's gone bankrupt. So go get yourself on the charts. Download Monopoly Go now, free in the App Store and Google Play. Lakers and Pelicans have a conundrum. Win and you're in to face the presumptive MVP and the defending champion Nuggets. Lose and you get to face the Thunder, the deepest, hungriest team in the league. Would you rather? <laughs> That's the question. As Locked On NBA host Matt Moore tells David Ramil, the Lakers and Pelicans should consider losing on purpose. I think ultimately they'll be like, no, like let's just go ahead and win. We can't risk it. This is my thought process on it, okay? There are teams that can really benefit from a playoff run. The the Pacers can get smashed in round two by the Knicks. That's fine. Like, I think that might be okay in that series. But just winning versus the Bucs means, hey, we want a playoff series, and we want it versus the versus a good team that had the, the structure, at least, of a team that won the title three years ago. Like, we've right. proven that we can compete in the playoffs. If you're... The Thunder making the conference finals means a lot. It's like, hey, you're already here. You are right. you are one series away from making the finals, right? Then there are teams where it is all or nothing. The Phoenix Suns should not be like, hey, we made the second round. No, like you were built to win a title. Right. You traded for Bradley Beal. You're all in. You traded for Kevin Durant, and then you traded for Bradley Bradley Beal. You are all in on winning a title. Look at your salary. Look at your long-term future. You have to win now. The Lakers have to win now. That's who they are. Okay? LeBron's 39. You got – he's slowing down. You have what? One – if they get a superstar this summer, they can make another run next year. And then that's probably it for LeBron. It's all or nothing. Is there a meaningful difference between losing in the first round and missing the playoffs entirely? What is particularly interesting to me about this whole discussion is if this were the Lakers and the Warriors, I think you might get different answers. The Lakers have had a good time with Oklahoma City because they're just too small. Between Anthony Davis and LeBron James, there is just no one on Oklahoma City who can stop them from dominating Inside, And although it has been a little overstated what the Warriors have done to Nikola Jokic in the postseason over the years, Draymond Green has done a good job, as good as anyone can do, at guarding Nikola Jokic. And the Warriors have done a good job, as good as anyone can do, at taking advantage of some of the things that Nikola Jokic does not do well on defense. If this were the Warriors and the Lakers, it would be obvious that they would have clear advantages 
with one team or the other. For example, the Thunder, they, they can play small with the Warriors. They can swarm Steph Curry and throw a million bodies at the, the wing players that they have. It's just not a great matchup. They would rather play the Nuggets if you're the Warriors, probably. But if you're the Lakers, you'd much rather face Oklahoma City, even if the Lakers did give the Nuggets a lot in the playoffs last year. But that's not the circumstance. It's the Pelicans and the Lakers. And they would both probably rather play the Thunder. But neither wants to lose because then you're a in a win and in single elimination game against Steph Curry or a, a Kings team that we've seen be a buzzsaw at times. This is this is talk about a conundrum. This is this is Sophie's choice. And finally, Boban Marjanovic, he's a man of the people. He wanted Clippers fans to have their chicken and eat it too. The Clippers run a promo where fans get free chicken if an opponent misses two free throws in a row. Boban knew this, and after missing the first of his two shots from the stripe, pointed to the crowd and then pointed to himself as if to say, I got you, I'll cover your chicken. He was letting them know they were getting the chicken. He then bricked the second attempt and waved to the crowd as he ran back on defense. He, he may be enormous, but not a scary guy, a man of the people, a gentle soul, a gentle giant. Boban, what a guy. There'll never be another one like him. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all the shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you the canvas analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Coming up on the next Locked On Sports Today, who will show out on the first day of the play-in? So at least until tomorrow, stay Locked On Sports Today. Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. For more episodes of Locked On Sports Today, go to our video on demand. Click on sports at the top of your screen. There you'll find past episodes of Locked On Sports Today, plus other Locked On shows on demand.